here it is, two drawers on the bottom and three shelves and a nice cornice on top and some nice detail on the sides so I was thinking of putting some wallpaper in there and some wallpaper on the back some wallpaper in these recesses and painting everything else white maybe do some See if I can get this right back to the wood and do a, a lime wash on it, either lime wash grey or lime wash white. Um, I'll take the drawers out, I'll put um, new handles on there, I'll sand them right back and either do a grey lime wash or a, a white lime wash and hopefully I might be able to get that kick plate on the bottom sanded too. So let's see how we get on. Hi guys, quick update here. Um, we managed to get the the fronts of the drawers sanded. We managed to get some of the base sanded off, so that was going really well. And then I just couldn't get into the cracks and crevices, so I want all of this bottom bit natural wood, and I want all of the top on this cornice, I want all of this natural wood. So, you know, I tried the sander, brilliant, got the drawers off, but it was a long, long, long time to do that. So I tried an air gun, a hot heat gun, and it didn't really burn it off. So we're now, and hand sanding took ages, so we're on the citrus strip gel. So this is like a nice citrusy smell. Not too bad, but it's very, very corrosive. So we've got the guns on, the gloves on, sorry. Um, I've got a little scraper here, and I've also got this wire brush. So it's been, overnight I wrapped it in glad wrap it's been sitting overnight so now we just got to see if we can you know, take some of it off and as you can see it's, it's, it's gone down the wood so that's good just gonna literally keep going and try and take as much as I can off and get into those little cracks and when all of that's done I'll um, Clean that with methylated spirits and we'll give you another photo shot. See you soon. Hi guys, we've um, taken all the citrus strip off there and as you can see, yep, it's taken the varnish off. But it's left this horrible, horrible orangey stain, which I don't know, it's done that a few times. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I'm going to try a bleach process now. I'm going to bleach all that stain back out. And as you can see on the top, it's taken the varnish off, but it's left the stain. So this wood should be like the drawers. So maybe we try a polycell stripper next on the next one. I'll keep you informed. So the bleach process is, I've just took Viking tablets. I'll just put one in my little margarine tub, in the water. I'm gonna let that dissolve and then I'm just literally gonna I'm gonna use a brush and I'm gonna paint it on and I think from what I've heard it only takes about half an hour so we'll give it a go and see if it can lift and then we need to neutralize where we've been with vinegar before we do any prep. Catch you soon. So we've uh, cleaned off all the residue and we've used white vinegar and water 50-50 and mm -hmm washed it all down and we're back to the wood. So I'm just waiting for that drying and then I'm going to give it a light sand with um, probably a little grit. So I've been around and scuffed sanded everywhere and washed with methylated spirits. So we're just waiting for that to dry now. And then I'm going to paint Tobin's prep inside all of these panels just before I add some wallpaper. So keep watching. Hi guys, back again. We're going to be using Tobin's 3 one prep. We have a roller, paintbrush. And we're going to be doing the inserts here. This is where I'm going to put the wallpaper in, in these little, these nice corners here and here. 
And what I want to do is I want to get in there and I'll put Tobin's prep in. Um, basically, I think that if the wallpaper's ever chipped or scraped, you've actually got a white surface underneath that's not going to come up and show dark lines. It's going to hide a lot of things. But also, it gives the wallpaper paste a lot more to grip onto. The Tobin's is a really good product. I like using it. There's a lot more good products out there. I'm not biased to this one. It's just I've been using it instead of let me down. So we're going to start painting in here and in here and everywhere we'll put wallpaper. I'm going to put the Tobin's prep in there. I will do the rest of it in Tobin's prep, but what I'm waiting on is I'm waiting for this fully drying out, the corners. So I need that fully dried out. I need the base fully dried out. So I can't really do anything white there at the minute because I'm going to tape that off and I'm going to stain, well, line wash this as well so it's going to be a long process on this one but this is the project that I go to in between doing customer pieces so while I'm waiting for the customer pieces drying out which I am now I'll start on this so this is one of my projects and I always give priority to the customer so here we go so the drawer I've taped off the front is going to be a line wash I've taped that off and it's had one coat. It'd be nice to open the drawer and not have the dark colour. So when we finish, all our dark colour will be gone. So I just start with, I've got a nice sleek 38 millimetre brush. And I'm just gonna go in here. And I've gotta be careful, I don't want any paint getting on where we just stripped off. So I'm just gonna go all the way around in this crack. Nice generous bit of paint. As I said, we scuff sanded this first and then we washed it down with methylated spirits. We wait a bit of drying. It's, it's good outside here, we get a little bit of a breeze. It tends to dry quickly, so that's why I like bringing the products what through the dry right here. So we'll go down the side. And this paint's pretty good because if you get any little cracks in here, it's, it acts as a filler as well. So it actually starts filling those little cracks in. And a few, two, three are coats and the cracks gone. So you don't always have to use a filler to get in there. Once you get the white in, cracks gone. Got a little crack there. And on here and on the top. So I'm just going to put more more paint in there. And then that'll disappear. So now we're on the roller. I'll try and get as much off the roller as possible. And as you can see, it's dry and really quickly. This is all very dry. And as you can see, good product. It's not scratching off. It just adheres to everything. And you don't get any scratches, so you don't get anything going right through back to the wood. Preparation is key in any of these products. The more time you spend on prep, the better the piece is going to turn out. And as I said, I'm just going to go around all these little places where I'm going to put wallpaper. And then I'll paint the whole thing once I'm ready to, because I still need to tape all of this off to do a nice coat of line wash on the base, the cornice, the drawers. So it's going to take a few weeks. But this is, as I said, this is what I go to while I'm waiting for the customers' paints drying. So this just keeps me busy having another piece on the go. And that's it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go do the bits inside. That's going to take the wallpaper on the other side. And we'll catch you when it's finished. Hi guys, I've mixed up some Polycell um, poly Extra Strength Paste because we've got a lot of area to do so I'm using the paste on this one. If I was doing wallpaper on drawers like this one, I like to use the PVA glue 
um, because you've got more use there where people go in with their hands and stuff and probably touching it more so this is all ready to go I've actually measured the first strip and I've cut it I've got one nice line um, from where the wallpaper edge edges so I'm going to use that on the left hand on the right hand side so I don't have to cut too much so what I use is I use a blunt knife and I also use a piece of scissors so we're gonna put the paste on the wallpaper we're gonna leave it for a couple of minutes and then we're gonna apply it on the top so I'll get going and put the wallpaper paste on the back and then we'll come back when I apply it so we just got the wallpaper paste and we just literally and liberally we're gonna put a lot of that on there just make sure you get every especially the corners and just keep doing that and the reason we leave it for a couple of minutes is that so the wallpaper paste that adheres to the back properly and also you get a bit of stretch with the paper so what you need to do is, is leave it a couple of minutes otherwise it, you get bubbles this will stop you getting a lot of bubbles I can't use two hands to hold the paper here so we're going to leave it for two minutes and let that soak in and it becomes more pliable for to use and then we're going to apply it So now I'm going to put it on here. I've gone into the corners and I've added some wallpaper paste as well, just to keep it moist so you get that extra time to, to play with it. I'm just going to move this up to the corner as much as we can. So I always double fold the paper back when I've got long strips. It just keeps the moisture in there, it doesn't dry out and it keeps the paper. Get the moisture in there just to give it that little bit of flexibility when you put it on. And then we're gonna smooth it out that way. If you get any dirty marks on the paper, you're going to paint it, so I'm not going to do that. So now I've done that, I'm just going to get a cloth, a towel, an old towel. Right hand side with the bumps because what I'm now going to do is I'm going to trim. So, how I trim is blunt knife. Now, let me just go in the corner, go in, up into the crack, and I just get the crease and then we pull it off. And you can see we've got a nice line there that we're just going to cut. I always cut it below the line because you don't want a gap at the top but then again you're going to be painting this so you're going to be painting right into the cracks anyway you see the colour so it'll hide let's go back push that down and see how it fits perfect nice colour and don't forget, you've still got a bit of flex in the paper, so it's not up against the edge, you can work it in. Now for this edge, so same again, I'm just going to put a little scallop. So while I'm sitting on the floor, I'm just going to grind. 
this one and do this section first. So I always try and keep the paper attached. It's a lot easier. And then you've got to look for the slime. There it is. I can see it better on the reverse. So I'm just going to try and put that. Don't be frightened to pull the whole piece of paper off. If you have to, you just pull it off, you take it away and you cut it. You just add a bit more wallpaper paste on there and off you go again. When you use the PVA glue, you don't have this time because it sets quickly, which is good, why it's good for drawers. But when you're doing this one with a lot of paper, I like the wallpaper paste. As I've said, you get more time to use it to get those nice edges. behind my fingers there so at least I know it's it hasn't dried out the whole paper case you know you've got a good hour before that will dry so you just got to keep coming back to it all the time just to make sure you've got the bumps and again push this back But again, we're going to be pulling it off because we're going to get our crease. There we go. Like I say, we've got plenty of time to work with, and I can feel there's a lot of glue still behind there, which is good. But on this one, I can almost see the line. Look. Okay, as I said before, don't be trying to pull it off. If that's the best way that you get the cut, that's the best way that you do it. Make it easy for yourself.
So this paint's not quite dry. I always like taking it off just before it's dried. So we'll just, and I always try and pull it sort of at a 90 degree angle, slowly. So what I then do is if I'm not happy with the edge, I then go in with a craft brush from Sleek. I just work my way down here and just go just go along the bottom slowly and take out those imperfections. A nice neat edge. not finished off quite yet. That one's had the paintbrush over. Got a little bit there. So that bit hasn't been done and that bit's been done. So we get a nice nice line there finishing off. Mm -hmm.